Hello. My name is Eric. This is my son Miles. Let's not be too loud. He's asleep. <laughs> so I have two stories I want to tell you, and they're very interconnected. So let's start with the first one. So the first part was that everything I own, everything fits in one backpack. If it doesn't fit in my backpack, I don't own it. So it was a few years ago when I really started to travel. And this is a picture of me in the Philippines. I was able to go there first for two months, just by myself, with a backpack, with nothing else. I was able to do this because I had, a, because I had already spent a whole year hitchhiking around the world. So I was able to learn about traveling around the world, and I'm hoping some of you might try this because of couch surfers. So this is my house in Cambodia. I was living in Cambodia, and I had a nice house, so I hosted 250 people. These are travelers, adventurers, just people from all over the world, from representing almost every country, including a few Chinese people, including my wife. I didn't meet her. So they told me their stories. They told me about hitchhiking. They told me about knocking on doors in villages of total strangers. They told me about dumpster diving. They told me about just exploring the world and throwing away all of the preconceived notions that I had, throwing away everything that people have told me, and instead of relying on that, to instead rely on experience. So first, I hitchhiked. I went to Thailand and I hitchhiked across Thailand. Now, when I was your age, for most of you at least, my friends decided to hitchhike across America. They invited me to go with them. I said, no way, that's crazy, that's dangerous, that's stupid, why would I do that? And now here I am, just a few years later, I decided to hitchhike around the world. And the thing is, by doing this, I found out it was safe. I found okay. out that even though I would go into the car of, of a total stranger in 2,000 cars, that nothing bad ever happened, that people were sweet, people I could trust them, that everything would go well. Ah, there I am, hitchhiking to Guangzhou. <laughs> so, while hitchhiking, I have to stay in a place, right? Well, I don't want to stay in a hotel. My cow shippers had told me how useful it is to, instead of staying in a hotel, to go to the home of a stranger, to knock on their door, right? To ask if I can stay with them. I did this in many countries, Thailand, India, Burma, in the Caucasus Mountains, in Turkey, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, the United States, and guess what? Even in China, I knock on the door, Ni hao, wo kai ju jalima. <laughs> they say yes, every time. I met some great people this way. So I stayed with families all over the world. Here's one of the families, this is in Armenia. I, not, I just meet them randomly on the street, I ask if they could host us. They say, sure, come on over. We stay with them five days. They teach us how to cook their bread. They teach us how to milk their goats. They te teach us how to make cheese. So many things we didn't learn. They, we did not become just friends. We became family. So everyone took us in in so many countries. Here I am in the Philippines, exploring, in a, in a little fishing island. So, by visiting all of these people, by hitchhiking all of these cars, I started to feel something very different than what I had been told. People always say the world is dangerous, that you really need to worry, that strangers are something to fear, that someone might steal my son, right? <laughs> the thing is, I'm very skeptical about these things because I met so many people, thousands and thousands of people. Sure, there are bad people, but you know what? They don't care about me. They don't pick me up on the side of the road. They don't talk to me. So I only met good people. And these good people, they take me into their world. As long as I respect them, as long as I honor them, as long as I consider what they're doing equal to what I'm doing, then they completely respect me. <laughs> so, in the Netherlands, I joined with a few squatters and we decided to dumpster dive. Do you guys know dumpster diving? Yeah? Dumpster diving is where I go to the trash can outside of the supermarket and I go in and I find delicious food. Sound good? It actually was. I was afraid of it. I thought it would be a bad idea because people had told me so many negative things about it. Only the super poor do that. Only the homeless do that. Only the crazy do that. Right? But I went there and the food was delicious. 
frozen veggie burgers, clean vegetables. This isn't nasty stuff, guys. It was really, really nice. Next, in France, I joined with squatters, staying in houses that had been abandoned. The government left it abandoned, or investors left them abandoned. I helped them clean them up. I helped them make them livable, trying to live in places. I Originally, I had been told that I have to rent a house, that I have to spend my money. I learned that that's definitely not always the case. So I kept learning from other people, and it kept changing my life. I kept understanding that people can really be trusted, that experience will show me much more than the word of anyone else. So the thing is, what is something I've always been told? I've always been told the world is dangerous, especially certain parts of the world. So I was told Skid Row was dangerous. Skid Row is part of the United States, part of California, part of Los Angeles. It's considered a very dangerous place. But I went there, and I trusted the most poor people, the most downtrodden people. These people are drug addicts, they're alcoholics, they're people who had terrible lives. They don't have homes and they sleep on the street. So I went there, and they became my friends. I talked to them, and they talked to me. I trusted them and they trusted me. They offered me a beer, they offered me their story, they told me about their life, and you know what? At night, they even offered me a place to sleep on the street with them. <laughs> so it might sound strange, but the thing is, it was completely safe. I had a great time with them. So the thing is, traveling, traveling, helped me throw away all of the fears, all of the preconceived notions that society, society had given to me. Society tells me one thing. The thing is, I can choose to believe it, I can choose to not believe it, but the best way to find out is through experience. Now, there's also one other thing, though, one other notion that maybe society didn't give me, but I still have. I was afraid of heights. So, this is my wife. She's 33 stories up on the edge of a building. Pretty scary, right? So, I'm afraid of heights, so maybe I was, but she wasn't. So I look at her and I try to understand, how is it that I am afraid of heights? How is it that, that when I look down, I am afraid of falling, but you're not? Right? There must be something about this. There must be something I can unlearn. So I tried. So this is me in the Nell City. Most of you probably don't know where this is. Anyway, let me tell you what I'm doing. I am jumping between buildings, and this is maybe five, six, seven stories up. So, of course, if you fall, you die. There's no question about that. The thing is, you don't fall. This going here allowed me to trust myself. Look, it might look like a big step, but it's not. This is a step that I, that you, we make it every single day. But for some reason, when people go there, when I went there, I was afraid at first. I can't make this step, and this step, and this step, but I make them all the time. The thing is, the Nell City it helped me understand that I can be sure of myself, that I don't have to fear falling, I just have to trust in myself. I've went through the whole city, I've been everywhere, I've taken many friends with me, maybe I'll take more of you with me if you want to come. The thing is, it's safe and it's fine. Let's see. So next, well, yeah, next my son, he showed me that experience teaches the best. I thought I knew this, but I never know it until I watch my little boy here. So. This is him on the beach of the Philippines. I brought him there. He destroyed my sand castle. He loves doing that. <laughs> then he decided that he wanted to try some sand. You know sand tastes bad, right? I know that sand tastes bad. So I could tell him, I could hit his hand and say no. Right? The thing is, he will never really learn if I don't let him try. So I let him try. <laughs> and it did not work out. Right? It's important to fail. Okay, succeeding is important, but so is failing. He never ate sand after this. Okay? So, I also tried to let my son live without the rules that were put on me and put on society. So, I, I tried to learn from his openness. Now, this is him with starfish. Have you guys ever played with starfish? No. No, no they're so amazing. These starfish, they're about the size of my face. Okay? And the spikes are about one centimeter long. If you step on them, they hurt, okay? But if you play with them like he does, it's no problem. He loves to play with them. He loves to pick them up and put them in the water where he knows they belong. So one day on the beach, we're walking, and there's lots of starfish because the tide brought them in. The little bitty starfish that I would never notice. 
he picks them up and he puts them in the water. He's not afraid of them. He understands where they belong. The same thing goes with bugs, guys. Many of you have been taught to fear bugs, right? Are you guys afraid of bugs? If I throw a bunch of spiders on you, what will you do? Yeah? Be a little bit afraid. So the thing is, guys, most bugs are completely safe, right? We've been taught that they're bad. My son has never been taught this. When he sees a bug, he knows what to do. First, he tells daddy. Then we play with the bug. Then we help the bug go outside to the grass because that's where the bug belongs. So he's learning these things, same way as you are learning these things. He can unlearn things just like you can unlearn things. OK, so our family is open. We have no expectations, no rules of the past. We travel, for example. So many people always tell me, Eric, you cannot travel. You have a son. You have to settle down. No, this is crazy. You know, there's a lot of traveling families out there, a lot of us, right? And we travel, and it's fun. Yeah, sure, it can be difficult from time to time, but it's far more amazing than difficult. The people who tell me that I can't travel, the people who tell me that I have to settle down have never traveled with a child, have never even traveled properly. That's the thing. You're getting your information mostly from people who don't have the experience, right? I'm not saying listen to me and my experience. I'm saying go try. You might have a different experience, you might have the same. So I also try to let my son go where he chooses. I feel that it's very wrong for me to tell him that he can't go to the road, right? By telling him he can't go to the road, he will never have the experience of going to the road. He will, it will always be a mysterious place. It will never be just a normal place. So we try to let him go where he wants, be it the road, be it the jungle, be at the beach, be at the water that's too deep for him. He can only experience what he does. And by experience, he learns. So we also let him explore the way he wants. This is him climbing up far on the table. Yes, I know it's dangerous. Yes, I know Chinese parents like to see these things and yell at me. <laughs> the thing is, I would much, much, much rather him climb up very high and then fall while I'm there then climb up and fall when I'm not. Okay, he will do things, so I have to understand this. And the next thing is, this is him playing with a coconut. It weighs about as much as him. I just thought it was cute. Okay, so me and my family, we own nothing. We don't own a house, we don't own a car, but we own our time. We can travel, we can go to country to country whenever we wish. We own our lives. So we will only be in China a few more months. After that, We'll move on to another country. <laughs> You're all welcome to join us anytime. <laughs>